Now, another extremely important point in regards to playing a solid open guard is not letting your opponent get past your knees. And this is highly related to guard retention. In my opinion, you can't have a very good you can't have a good open guard unless you have good guard retention. It's it's utterly impossible to to be able to do that because you are 100% going to come across scenarios where you have to retain your guard, especially in severe situations where the person's like practically past your open guard, and then you have to basically get your open guard back, or you need to reset. So with that, to make your life easier, if you focus on them not passing your knees, your guard retention and your open guard game is going to be a lot better. And the reason for that is because if they cannot pass your knees, they cannot control your hips, right? It's as simple as that. If we're here like this, right? And um, we're in this situation, and Russ goes to do a knee cutter on me, and we just pause. He, my knee's back here, my knee's back here. He's now past my knees. And essentially, a lot of people who do knee cutters, they don't even realize at this point they're also controlling my hips. He is sitting on my hips. And even worse, he has an underhook on me, right? So he has this position, so that's a whole, that's a whole nother ball game, not letting people get underhooks, all right? So quickly, don't let people underhook you. So we're here like this, this is, this is not good. However, if I were able to, just a little bit, go like this, right? My knee is now out. I'm protecting my knee and stopping him from, from passing this knee. This knee, look, he's not past my knee. What I mean is don't let their hips get past your knee. If their hips get past your knee, then it's gonna be much harder. But if I'm here, I'm able to get through, now I can recover and I can get my guard back. All right, don't use that as a legit example to stop the knee cutter, all right, it's, it's, it's not. I'm just giving you um, the concept to think about. Do everything you can to not let them pass your knees, because if they pass your knees, there's a high chance they're gonna pass your guard. At the very minimum, they're gonna get a lot of pressure on you and make it, um, basically make it a, a really rough situation for you to get your guard back and then retain your guard. So do not let them pass your knees. So. If we're like if we're if we're in like a, a sitting guard situation, I'm protecting my elbows because I don't want him to underhook me. But let's say he does underhook me and he goes a knee cut. I'm I'm fighting to get my knee back. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting hard. So if you notice, I focus. I don't know if you're able to see that in the camera. I'm focusing on not letting him trap this knee. It's such a simple scenario. He was able to get underhook, but I came here and I went like that because I know if he passes this knee. The chances of him getting a solid knee cutter on me is extremely high. So the initial start for a knee cutter is usually getting that penetration step, shooting that deep underhook, and making sure you step over the leg. I stop the last part, which kind of kills the rest of it at that point. Because if he cannot get past my knee, he cannot control my hip. If he can't control my hip, he can't necessarily control my upper body. So it's basically you know, it's the ladder of passing, right? He has to get past my... My feet or ankles get past my knee and then get to my hips. And then if you want to continue the ladder, control the head, okay? When I'm here like this, we do this once again. He shoots that under up. Oh, I'm coming here. I'm clearing my knee out. I don't want him to get that. And th this is the point where I didn't even let him get to the point where he was actually even able to establish the knee cutter because I never let him pass my knees. Once again, we're just showing you a demo here. This is a live roll, but even if it was live roll, I would be doing the same exact thing. I would be doing the same exact scenario. You know, if I'm here like this, and I'm like, I'm like down low, yeah, and he, he does this, right? If he gets past my knees, go ahead, get past my knees, here, boy, like, it's hard, it's hard for me. He can start working the pass. Now I now I um I'm not I'm not even retaining my guard anymore, I'm escaping. Now, transitional escapes are going to come into play. If you didn't watch the series that I sent out on the email list or if you're on the grapplers guide and you didn't watch the um, transitional escape videos, try to find those, okay? Because um, I talk about transitional escaping. Now we, com now we combine these concepts and we're actually creating a more solid uh, game, essentially. So if we kind of go back to the situation, I'm coming here. Look, I'm, I'm bringing my knees in. Because now when he goes to do the, the go back, mm -hmm. he goes to do that. He, Oh, I'm coming here. It, it doesn't exist anymore. I'm making sure he does not get past my knee. He's coming on this side, right? So I need to protect this knee here. I don't want this to happen. Um, another situation, and this is what I really like to do with people. Let's say we're playing half guard. 
I love the over under pass. People who are on the grapplers guide, right? They know I love the over under pass. There's a there's like a 40 to 50 video series on just the over under pass on the grapplers guide. And one of my favorite things to do is just take this knee and step over. Yeah, look, he's already passed my knee. And this is a side that he wants to pass on. So he's already passed my knee. So if he just gets a quick head to pull and boom and kicks back, he's passed at that moment. It is my responsibility to understand where my knees are, okay? So when I'm here, right, and I feel him go past my knee, I gotta get it back. Go past my knee, boom, I gotta get it back. Each time, I gotta get that knee back. I have to do everything I can to get the knee back. Now let's say, for example, we'll turn angles. Let's say, for example, he has the same position, right? He gets past my knee, right? And I, I can't get it back by just pushing. I might come here. Look what I did. I basically did this situation where I kind of turtled down and pulled my knee out. I'm still in a good spot. I was on the bottom anyway, so who cares if he takes me down? Like, it's whatever. I was a playing guard. He's in like a treetop type of takedown scenario, but it's whatever. If he goes past my guard from here, yeah. it's, it's not. It's, it's too much of a scramble situation. So, in my mind, I was in a worse position. He was able to pin my knee, get it past, but an alarm was going off. Don't let him stay past my knee. Get my knee back. Get my knee back. Free the knee. Free the knee. Free the knee. I wasn't able to just do it. I, I can't do it just by pushing, which is the ideal way. So I come here. Boom. Bam. Now I pop the knee out. And then we reset from there. Don't ever let them get past your knees. It doesn't matter the type of scenario. Now, some situations are harder than others. So um, you might end up in a transition scenario where the person gets a guard pass on you. And then it's hard. The, the, at that point, right, if you can't free your knee, it's because you lost the initial, you lost everything else before then, right? You, you, you either didn't control um, the, the situation, you didn't control like one arm fully, you didn't have an attacking mindset, or you just lost whatever scramble you ended up in. I mean, you could end up in a scramble where the person ends up in a guard pass and you lost that. That had nothing to do with open guard. That's a whole different situation, right? Jiu-Jitsu is extremely dynamic. But at the very minimum, if you could figure out in your guard retention movements how to get your knee back, it's going to help you out. It's going to help you with those particular um, situations. Uh, let's say, for example, we're, we're going to use kind of inverting as an example. So if we're here, right, and he starts bringing my leg by, boom, look, I'm, I'm doing this, but look what's happening. It's by me inverting, I'm saying, no, you're not going to get past my knee. My knee went from all the way over here to all the way over here. And if he can't get past my knees, then it's gonna be harder for him to do anything. The same thing applies to uh, stack passes, right? A lot of people don't know this, boom, but if we're here, right? And he goes like this, I do not want him to get past my knees. So here, if my knees are over my hips, I consider this technically him being past my knees, okay? And the reason for that is because when we go here, and you start really look, she's here like this, it's very hard for me to deal with, but I want to do the best I can to get my knee back. I'm doing everything I can to get my knee back. I mean, one scenario that I like to do, even when someone goes to do a double underpass on me, is we'll go here like this, I go here, I push, and I get my knee back. That is really one, that's, that's, a, high, uh, that's a highly effective thing that I like to do when a person goes to do a double underpass. I focus on how I can get my knee back. There's so many different passing scenarios. I could spend hours upon hours just going over all different passing scenarios and how to get your knee back. But if you have the idea and the concept and the mindset of do not let them pass your knees, it's going to be so much harder for them to pass. And this is related to hip control. I'm probably not even going to uh, show you a video, especially for those who are on the email list. Grappler's got to probably show in regards to not letting them control your hips. So I do have a video on keeping your hips free, right? I do have a, definitely have a video on that on the grapplers guide. I believe it's in the invisible grappling section. Um, but if you stop them from passing your knees, you stop them from controlling your hips. And if they control your hips, it's, it's almost game over at that point. Your life is much harder in regards to um, basically retaining. And also, if, they, if you control your hips, they, they, they probably pass. It probably passed at that point, and now you have to figure out how you can escape quick enough to where they don't get a submission, 
or escape quick enough to where they don't hold you for the proper amount of time to get points in a particular tournament. So focus on this idea, focus on this concept. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a mental concept. It's not even so much technical. There are many technical aspects to it, but at least if you go in with the mental idea, if you're somebody who gets your open guard past a lot, and you, can, and you now walk in with a mindset of keeping your knees free, I'm telling you straight up, this will help you right away. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, right? I'm not, you, might, you might free your knee the first time and then stop them from passing, but then they hit a pass right after and then they pass your guard. At least you freed your knee the first time. Now it's your responsibility to free the second time, a third time, and then improve upon your, your game to where you don't even need to keep repeating the situation, all right? Um, so play around with that. If you have any questions, comments, send me an email or post below. I believe this concept is very useful. It helps me out a lot. I'm guilty of forgetting it. There's times where like, you know, I'm rolling with somebody whose pace is so strong and I can't even keep up that like, I don't even think about getting my knees back. But once I do, <laughs> once I do think about getting my knees back, then it makes my open guard so much better. So, um, you know, hopefully this helps you out. And if it does or it doesn't, let me know. All right. Peace.